Hello, welcome to another IELTS writing video. In this video, we are looking at academic task one structure and how you can apply it to the IELTS writing exam. If you find this video helpful, come and join us at the forum IELTSnetwork.com and for more videos like this one, visit my blog at IELTSWritingBlog.com. Before we talk specifically about the structure, we first need to understand the difference between a data source and a data trend. Here on the screen, we have a very simple line graph. This line graph shows the average daily milk beverage product consumption among adult age groups in Canada. And the figures are shown in milliliters. This entire graph is one data source. Within the graph, we see a line that is showing a downward trend. So as a person ages in Canada, they consume less milk products. This line is a data trend. If we were to have a, a second line on this graph, so perhaps one line showing um, Canadian males and one line showing Canadian females, there would be two trends in this graph. On your IELTS exam, you will have at least one data source, sometimes two, and usually your data source will depict several different trends within it. So the graph we have here is abnormally simple. Okay, the next thing to understand before we can proceed to the structure itself is the difference between broad, major, and minor details within your task one data source. So if we look specifically at this trend, the broad detail is the overall quality of this piece of information. So this trend is moving downwards. That is the broad detail. It is a downward moving trend. The minor details refer to the parts of the trend that move or develop or evolve in a similar fashion. So from young adults to adults, this would be one minor trend. And here we see a, um, a downwards movement, a downwards progression from adult to middle aged would be another minor trend. This minor trend moves down more rapidly than the, the first minor trend we saw between young adult and adult. And then between middle-aged, and we could, we could stretch it out to elderly because the progression is fairly stable, we could call this third part another minor detail. This minor detail uh, would be described as a gradual drop between middle-aged and elderly as far as milk beverage product consumption is concerned. Now if we talk about minute details, minute details are specific figures within the trend. So for example, young adults consume just over 500 milliliters of uh, milk beverage products. Adults, however, consume 400 milliliters of milk beverage products on average. Now these single points of information are minute details. 
the important thing to remember is that in your task one response, you do not need to share every single minute detail. You only share the minute details that are significant, the minute details that mark a point of change um, in the data trends development. So the important minute details when we look at this data trend would be the beginning, uh, the change in drop, in the speed of the drop at adult, again, the change that occurs at middle-aged, and finally, the end at elderly. We would, in our writing, we would likely not share the figure for older adult because this trend follows a similar progression. So now you know the difference between a data source, a data trend, broad details, minor details, and minute details. Now let's talk about structure for your writing. So, as mentioned, when you get into your IELTS exam, you will be presented with either um, a single data source or you will be presented with two data sources. The structure you will follow is different depending on what you are given. So if you have a single data source, your structure will look like this. If you have a double, if you're given two data sources, your structure will look like this. The important thing to note is that both structures are very similar. You have an overview section which is one paragraph long and you have an analytical section which is either one paragraph long given a um, single data source, given a single data source, or it will be two paragraphs long given two data sources. So let's talk about single data source structure. In your single data source structure, you will typically have two paragraphs. The first paragraph will give an overview of the data source. And in this paragraph, you will have two sentences. The first sentence tells uh, about the data type. So what is the data type that you're shown? Is it a line graph? Is it a pie chart? Is it a bar graph? Is it a diagram? Um, is it a table? Uh, and you will explain what the information is. So in the case we were looking at it before, it's um, average milk beverage consumption over the lifetime of a typical Canadian. And uh, in the second sentence, you will be sharing the broad details. So in our simple line graph from before, the broad detail was that it, um, it showed a downward trend, a fairly stable uh, downward trend. Okay, in the analytical section for your single data source structure, you will have a paragraph that describes the minor and minute details. Now, we do not describe all of the minor details first and then all of the minute details. We have to uh, we have to balance them as we describe the graph. So we would typically share a minor detail and then perhaps a minute detail to punctuate it. A minor detail and then a minute detail. And it goes on like this. And finally, we, sh we write the conclusion sentence, which is typically the final figure that you are given in your data source. So in the case of our simplified graph before, this would be the figure given for elderly people. If we're given two data sources, we start the writing with an overview paragraph. Um, just like in the single data source structure, your first sentence is going to declare, is going to state 
what types of data sources you have been given. So are these line graphs? Is it a line graph and a pie chart? Is it a diagram and a table? And what do these pieces of information show? So what are the data sources showing? The second sentence in your overview is going to state the relationship between the two sources. And often there is a broad detail that is created between the two of them. So for example, um, if you are given two pie charts that show information for two different points in time, typically those two charts will show some sort of major development or trend over that period of time. And you would need to state clearly what that relationship is here. The second part of this response is also very similar to single data source structure in that the second paragraph will deliver the minor detail, minute detail, minor detail, minute detail of the first data source that you are given. Okay, and you keep doing that until you have fully described the data source and then you share a conclusion which is typically the final figure that you are given or if it's a cycle it would be the final step in that cycle or if it's a, a diagram it would be the the final parts of that diagram and then the same is true for paragraph 3 analyzing data source 2 you talk about the minor detail and any associated or significant minute detail, minor detail, minute detail, and keep going until you reach a conclusion. So as you can see, these three paragraphs in here are quite similar. So as I was saying, um, although many people might think you start talking broad and then you talk all, all about your minor details and then minute details, this method of describing your data source is not correct. What you want is to start by talking about the broad details that you are given and then move into the minor and minute details. And typically you're going to share the broad details in the first paragraph of your response. Minor and minute details are shared together. Minor details are shared and if a significant point arises, then a minute detail is shared to ensure that you are clearly defining what is being shown in the data source. So, if we take this graph, which is um, a more complex graph than what we had seen before, uh, this graph shows my diet between 2009 and 2013. Now, this is one single data source, as I was telling you, and within this data source, you see five different trends. To describe this data source, we would use single data source structure. Now, the broad detail we see is that typically, um, some of the cuisines that are marked on this graph are negatively correlated with other cuisines. So for example, um, the Korean cuisine uh, trend and the other cuisine trend are negatively correlated with the Indian cuisine trend and the Arabic cuisine trend. Okay, so uh, we would state that as our broad detail. Now when we go into talking about the minor and minute details, um, we might group certain trends together. So for example, Korean cuisine and other cuisine, they both start with uh, a plateau and then they both fall to the same figure between 2012 and 2013. So we would group these when we talk about them. Uh, these figures we would also group. This is Indian cuisine and Arabic cuisine because they start low at a plateau and then they both jump higher in 2012. So one data source, five data trends. 
and each of these trends has minor and minute details that need to be described. Here we have the same information shown in two data sources. So these two pie charts show the difference in my diet between 2009 and 2013. So uh, we see that Arabic cuisine, which started at 4%, um, had a major jump to 43% in 2013. Uh, this is Korean cuisine, which started at 40%, fell to 3%. So what you can see is that certain trends, certain broad details are created between the two data sources. And you would have to state this in the first paragraph of your response. And then you would go on to describe the two uh, graphs themselves the two pie charts themselves. Now the same is true when we look at a schedule. So sometimes you will be given something that is uh, cyclical. So this is a weekly schedule for bus routes in Vancouver. And this would follow single data source structure. So we would only be um, writing in two paragraphs the first paragraph would state what the source is. So this is a schedule, a bus schedule, and it, uh, it shows travel times uh, from Monday to Sunday. What are the broad details here? Well, the broad details are that there um, is heavier bus circulation between Monday and Friday. Uh, less bus circulation on Saturday and no bus circulation on Sunday. That is the, the broad trend. Now the minor trends, we can see certain patterns. So if we look between Monday and Friday, there is heavier bus circulation um, between 8 a.m. and 11 a.m. and again between uh, 4.30 p.m. and 7.30 p.m. So we can see here's one minor trend and here's another minor trend. On Saturday, there are more minor trends, 8 to 11, minor trend, 4.30 to 7.30, minor trend. Sunday, there is no service. Now, the minute details is when we get very specific. So if we look between 8 and 11, we can see that the buses are coming, or that this bus uh, route, the bus comes every half hour. So that is a minor detail. Okay, the same thing occurs between 4.30 and 7.30. The bus comes every half an hour. That's a very specific detail. And when we are describing, we wouldn't say the bus comes at 4.30 and then it comes at 5.30 and then, or sorry, then it comes at 5 and then it comes at 5.30 and then it comes at 6. These are too many minute details. We would just group them together. We would uh, state that the bus runs between 4.30 and 7.30 and that it comes on the half hour. So that would be a minor detail plus a minute detail. Now, if we look at Saturday, again, minor detail, the bus travels, uh, the bus uh, runs between 8 and 11, and it comes every hour. That is a minor detail plus a minute detail. Then it comes um, between 4.30 and 7.30 and runs every hour. Again, another minor detail and minute detail. Okay, so I hope that in uh, subsequent videos we can use these two structures, single data source structure and double data source structure, to create some effective task one responses. Thank you for listening and have a nice evening.